<clears throat> okay, are you ready? I was born ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. I- We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? They could be anybody's. Nobody... Nobody trusts anybody now. We're all very tired. Put the bat down, Wendy. Stop it! Give me the bat. Wait! Give me the bat. Stop it! Give me the bat. Stop Stop swinging the bat. Wait, stop! Give me the bat. Give it! Wendy! Give me the bat. Give me the bat. What is up, guys? It is Carly here, bringing you episode 7 of the Movie vs. Movie Horror Podcast. Yes, we are finally back here after, you know, a short hiatus. I think we might have missed, like, a month or two, which, you know, isn't that bad uh, compared to, like, my other show, Netflix and Chill, which we only, you know, we only talk about that. But, um, yeah, we are finally back and ready to record a new show for you. As always, I am joined with Mr. Austin. How are you doing, Austin? I am doing just wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm really uh, happy to be back uh, doing this show. Uh, really had a while where I wasn't doing podcasts for like a solid like month and a half ish time. Uh, just kind of had stuff come up and uh, you know been uh, I just haven't been able to do it. So uh, yeah, finally uh, excited that we are back and uh, yeah we will. Uh, you know, be getting back to our regularly uh, monthly-ish schedule. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty much going strong. I mean, we, we didn't miss any months, and then, mm-hmm. you know, things came up, and um, honestly, I, had been, I hadn't really been podcasting much either. I kind of, you know, I started a new show up with Derek that we've also been doing monthly here, and so far, we're on a streak. We, we've got three episodes in, three months down, but, um, you know, he kind of asked me what I was up to, and I... I really hadn't recorded anything besides the show, the few shows with him, and I haven't guested on anything or done uh, Netflix and chill. I think our last episode was like June. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to be back and recording. It's always um, refreshing to, you know, kind of take a break a little bit and then get back into things. I think it's always uh, exciting to get back into the flow. So, yeah, we'll hopefully be uh, back to our regular monthly schedule here. Um, I was also pretty busy in August, um, and going forward, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have much planned or anything like that, so it should be a lot easier to record here. But yeah, see, that's why we said like monthly ish. Yes. Because <laughs> we don't put a limit, so we don't have, we don't feel pressure when you know it's like, oh, it's been a month, we have to record, you know. Uh, so if stuff comes up and it's just like, oh, whatever, you know, we're a monthly-ish so, show, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like a good, it's like, yeah, I feel, I always feel that way because, you know, I keep bringing up Netflix and chill, but when we started that show, we thought we were going to be a two-week thing, and we did that for a while until he started up 22 shots again, and then we kind of just fell off, and I remember back, that was like my, when I first started getting into all this, and I was so stressed, I was like, oh my god, we haven't released an episode in three weeks, like, we ruined it, we broke the streak, my life is over, my podcasting career is done, (laughs) so, um, yeah, I do prefer to, um, have some sort of a schedule where we, you know, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Um, can't think of it, but we plan to have a monthly type of thing going on, but when stuff comes up, we're not going to cry about it. So, mm-hmm. but anyway, today we are here to do, um, two movies. Um, of course we had, I think we announced that we were going to do something on our last episode and that kind of fell through. So we kind of scrapped the whole idea and we decided to uh, go with another episode that we had had planned because we do have, we do kind of make a list of things that we're going to do in the future. So we kind of just skipped the whole idea that we had previously and went with this. And I would call it, uh, I guess, two adventure type of horror movies slash travel slash exploration, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So pretty excited to get into these ones. Yeah. So uh, for that, um, what you've been, up to lately um well you you know like i said august was kind of busy for me in a good way um i actually went to a drive-in with jp we went to this drive-in it's called the mahoning drive-in some people might have heard of it before um it's on the other side of pennsylvania near the philadelphia area and um it's crazy it was when we drove out there you actually saw signs from new york and new jersey Mm -hmm. so it's legit just on the border there. You actually had to drive through Maryland and dip back up into PA. And I was pretty proud of myself personally because it was like five hours away and I had never driven that far away where I'm the one driving. Of course, JP helped, but it's usually anytime I've gone on trips, it's been like my mom driving or another friend driving and it's never been my own thing. So that kind of made me more ambitious to uh, get out in the world and do other horror events. But that drive-in was pretty cool. They played the first night. They did um, Friday the 13th Part 3. Then they did Prom Night. Or no, they did Motel Hell. And then Prom Night was the final one. Which that night, I'll, I'll admit, was kind of weak. I mean, Friday 3 was the most exciting part. Um, Prom Night, I've come to find I'm not a big fan of. I've seen it only like once or twice when I was a kid. And even back then, I remember not liking it. And I was excited to recheck it out, but... It, it turns out it's just not just not that great of a movie. I've never seen the sequels. I feel like I've hear, heard people say they're actually more entertaining, so I do want to check those out eventually. But in Motel Hell, they actually played at the drive-in that I've mentioned before that we go to every year. It's only about an hour away from us, and they played that, um, I, I believe, two years ago. And uh, that's another one I'm just not a big fan of. But the next night was pretty cool. Um, they were Funny story, they were supposed to play The Stepfather, It was supposed to go to The Stepfather, Popcorn, um, Jason Goes to Hell, and then their bonus movie was going to be Cutting Class because they actually had Jill Shulman, who played in, obviously, three out of the four movies there. They had her in attendance, and we did get her autograph. um, But Stepfather, they went to play it, and we immediately were like, wait a minute, this is the remake of Stepfather. And at first we thought like the guy was trolling, who was running the thing. So we were kind of like, um, and then JP went up, he was like, okay, I'm just going to get a drink if this is going to happen. And then pretty much after the beginning scene, the guy shut down the projection, everyone clapped. And he was like, he was like, the studio sent us the wrong movie guys. I am so sorry. Um, so we're just going to skip right to popcorn. Cause this movie's a piece of shit. And everyone <laughs> cheered and was happy. It kind of sucked to like, not get to see Stepfather, because I've actually never seen the original. I've only seen that remake, and I hear the original is really, really solid. Yeah. But it was just a funny little experience, at least. But overall, that was fun. Then, you know, the next weekend, I went to Gettysburg for the first time, and that was pretty cool. I've always wanted to go there, but we went there for a horror convention. And it was the first time they ever put on that convention. It was called Creature Feature Weekend, and... um we actually learned about it at Living Dead Weekend in Monroeville. Uh, the guy who was representing it came there and was trying to like persuade us to go. And we were like, you know what? Sure, we'll check it out. That's only like three hours away for us. So it was kind of an easier trip. And um, they had some pretty cool people there for being their first time. They had, um, you know, um, the director as well as two cast members from Frankenhooker. And, and they actually did a commentary on the film, uh, Frank Henenlotter, as well as the girl who played Frankenhooker and, and um, the main dude in the movie. And that was my first time seeing the movie, which I enjoyed. And then they also had Corey Feldman there, who we did not meet because he seemed kind of like a douchebag. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just based on his uh, Q&A. So, uh, you know, that's unfortunate. But he was also charging a lot for an autograph, and I figured I'd save money. But Alex Vincent from Child's Play was also there, which was pretty awesome. And uh, just seeing how well it went this first time around, um, I think that they could potentially do more things next year if they continue to do this and uh, get better vendors and more people involved and more actors to come. So overall, that was pretty exciting as well. And um, so, yeah, it's been like my two exciting weekends. That was a back to back weekend thing during the summer based on horror. And other than that, um, just been doing my usual thing, watching horror movies and all that. Um, So, yeah. What have you been watching and stuff like that? Austin. Yeah, um, yeah, just the stuff that's come, in the th- come out in the theaters, really, um, which has been quite a bit since our last time uh, recording, I think so. I think the Child's mm-hmm. Play remake hadn't even come out in the theaters last time we recorded, or it had just come out or something, um, or one of the two. Uh, but, yeah, um, Ready or Not was, um, watch that, that was a really, really fun movie. Um, definitely a nice, really nice surprise, which this year has, you know, definitely supplied, um, quite a few of those, actually, which is really cool to see. Um, checked out the Midsummer Director's Cut, which I would say definitely improves on, um, the regular cut. Um, and I did, you know, uh, really, really love, um, the, this movie, uh, this time around. Just noticing, you know, um little things that I didn't notice the first time in there. Um, I love movies that had just put, like, a lot of, like, small details um, in it. That's why I, um, I'm a big fan of um, Jordan Peele's Us from this year. This is kind of the same way. A lot of, like, little Easter egg-type things that are in there that make it just really cool and really cool to you can rewatch and go back and find them. But, um, yeah, I really love that movie. And, yeah, it Chapter 2. Watch mm-hmm. today. And... Yeah, that was great, um, despite what some people are saying about it. Um, but I feel like um, now you're starting to hear more positive things about it from what I've seen. Yeah. It um, feels like like the first like, week, it was like, oh, you know, this, that, it's a huge disappointment. But now, like, what I've heard from people, you know, I've heard people, I've seen people give it a 10 out of 10. Um, so, I mean, it seems like people are, you know, enjoying it. More people are starting to enjoy it now, I guess. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Not as good as the first one overall, but uh, had some really, really strong parts in the movie um, that I definitely enjoyed. Really didn't feel like a three-hour long movie. Um, yeah. It did drag a, l- a little bit, but like, you know, for a three-hour movie, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've been, I've watched hour and a half long movies that feel longer than that movie, so um, but, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and, like, that seems like a big complaint for people is they thought it was too long and dragged on. I really didn't feel that at all. I mean, I kind of wanted more, and a lot of it is, for me, it's funny that, you know, it's like a big horror movie coming out. But to me, it's like the comedy aspect of the whole thing, and I couldn't wait to see the movie just to see the camaraderie between mm-hmm. all the characters as grown-ups because it cracked me up the first movie whether it be a positive or a negative maybe you're there to see you want to see a clown kill people and be scary but for me i just enjoy um seeing them all uh interact and i just felt like i could have i just kind of craved more by the end i almost wish there was more it films in a way and yeah i really enjoyed it i agree i think i i gave it like a half point less than the first one just because i think i just like the whole kid aspect in the first one and there are a few nitpicks i do have with this one but um overall it was a fun time and i would even go see it again uh Mm -hmm. you know when the first one came out i actually did see it twice i saw it once you know with friends and then once with my mom because she was interested in checking it out so that was one where i did go back to the theater and rewatch it so um yeah i enjoyed this it's actually funny my co-worker she has um she has two little kids and her two year old son's like obsessed with Pennywise. <laughs> and um, it, it, he's so cute, too. And she always comes to work and like tells me about him because she knows I love horror movies. And she's like, oh, he's always talking about Pennywise. And she's like, I don't want people to be like, why is that? You let your kid watch that movie. And then she said she went to the drive in to um, check out uh, its chapter two because the drive in around us is playing it. And she didn't take her kids. But when they pulled up there. She said the guy next to them came up to them and was like, is, 
is this the screening for it or is this a screening for Dora? And he was like dead serious because he was like, he was like, because there's so many little kids around here. Like so many people brought their little kids to see the movie. So I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I think the casting was spot on. Mm -hmm. And um, I definitely say check it out in the theater if you can, because it's a good experience. Um, Yeah, I, I also saw bunch of people saying how they had to pee during the movie and that was one of their complaints and um surprisingly i did not have to do that and i usually have to pee a lot so um my advice is just pee as soon as you before you get in there and you'll be good that's what i do before every movie i go yeah watch the theater, so yeah it's, it's called strategy people yes <laughs> like get get with it yeah. um but yeah, all joking aside, uh, good movie, uh, Midsommar, I enjoyed that one as well. I thought it was really disturbing. I did not check out the director's cuts. Um, I know I'll probably regret that because everyone is acting like it's, it, you know, it definitely improves upon the film a little mm-hmm. bit. But first time around watching it was kind of enough for me for now. And that that's definitely a compliment to the movie. It disturbed me that much that I don't want to really run back to it. And, uh, you know, that means the movie did well and it did its job. It's just not a fun one that I really was interested in rewatching just a few weeks later, or however much later that was that that new one came out. So, oh, but I think, overall, I think, I think the ending's a blast. Uh, <laughs> especially, especially that scene in the barn. That's just it's yeah, lovely. real feel, real feel good film. Bring yeah. the whole family, bring the kids, <laughs> bring everyone. Tell your wife. But um, uh, yeah. Uh, overall, um, I've been pretty, you know, happy with the movies I've been seeing. Ready or Not was also a really fun one. Uh, I agree. Like it's one by the trailer, I wasn't too thrilled by it. I, I just didn't understand what was going on in the trailer, and it seemed like it was. I don't know, it just seemed like something I was not going to enjoy, and it it was really fun, and it had some hilarious moments in it as well, so this is like the year of fun movies, like horror yeah. comedies, it feels like, too, um, besides Midsommar, obviously, but... Mid- 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 Midsommar is even a horror comedy, because there's... You know, oh, yeah, yeah! Comedy in that. You know what, I didn't even think about that, you got that kid, <laughs> that freaking stupid-looking kid, I, yeah. I don't know, if the, we're the Miller's kid, that's all I picture him <laughs> in. <laughs> And he's got those goofy eyebrows. He just looks like a cartoon character. So I actually completely forgot about that. He does. He is the comic relief in that film. I kind of keep thinking that movie's just plain disturbing, and that's it. But oddly enough, they do add that to it. So that's kind of – and it's pretty well-placed in the film as yeah. well. So, yeah. But overall, I think it's a solid year for freaking theatrical releases. Yeah, I'll tell you really that much solid. compared to, like – Probably last year. I mean, last year, it's good movies, too. But I feel like I'm enjoying everything this year. And I'm intrigued to see what um, comes out, like, on streaming and all that and the independent releases. Because I really haven't watched much in that uh, territory yet. Yeah, all the independent ones I've watched. There's been, you know, a few ones that will probably, you know, make my list at the end of the year. Or, you know, will come close. But, uh, you know, it's been pre... My list so far is pre-dominated by... uh, at least the top of it, is pretty dominated by theatrical releases, which, you know, is unlike my last two years of doing this, um, you know, ranking all my movies and stuff like I watch each year. So, um, you know, that's, that's a good thing, you know, that, you know, we're getting some higher quality movies released in theaters. And also, you know, I haven't, you know, um, seen any Slendermans this year either mm-hmm. in theaters. So uh, that's definitely a, a plus. Oh my god, I saw, I was at Walmart the other day, and I just saw one, it was called The Selfie Man. Oh, what the fuck is that? I don't know, I I like picked it up and read the back, and it sounded like exactly what you expected, like every other movie that's come out in the recent, like probably three years, it has to do with just social media, or just anything to, anything to try to lure in the young ones, I guess you can say. Um, I did not watch it, I did not buy it, I just kind of had to laugh, because... You know, at least it was on DVD, and they weren't trying to put it in theaters, like you said. Like, we don't... There's no... There's only one major clunker this year for me, and that came out, I believe, in January, and it was that Final Wish Yeah, that movie. was only in theaters for, like, a day, I think, so yeah. it was like a special thing. But yeah, yes. the movie fucking sucks, so... Yeah, so that... <laughs> that you don't even have to count that one as a theatrical no, release, really, but... That was the only uh, major downfall to this year so far, I would say. Selfie man, that's that literally made me cringe all throughout I, my boy. That's ooh, that's terrible. It sends chills down your spine, but not <laughs> oh, in a yeah, good way. That's, uh, that's just about as bad as Halloween kills. So.
<laughs> <laughs> I can't get over that title. I wish I wish they would just change it, like keep that. That could be their working title, but I wish they would come up with yeah. something a little different by like, the time the movie comes out. Like I've said, like I like I'm just gonna feel so wrong if that movie ends up being like good. And I have to announce on next year, sh- next year's show, like, oh, my number eight movie for this year is Halloween Kills. Like, uh, <laughs> it sounds wrong. Yeah. Like, what What do you mean? Like, Halloween Kills? Like, I picture the entire season of Halloween killing people, yes. which isn't even a picture. Like, you can't picture that. That's, not, that's nothing. But uh, whatever. Whatever. They couldn't. I mean, obviously, they called the freaking... I want to say first one. The, so whatever you call it that came out last year, they just called that Halloween. So they're not very inventive no. with their titling. But ne- nevertheless, I'm hoping for the best. I wasn't. I, I've expressed enough that I wasn't too thrilled with the new Halloween film, like other people were. So um, which is unfortunate. But I do kind of have my hopes for whatever they come up with next. And I am happy that they're making new Halloween movies because I am, you know, kind of kind of a Halloween fangirl, I guess. It's kind of the f- big franchise out of the big three that I grew up with and I had watched all those movies first and I rewatched them a lot growing up. So I'm always excited for a new Halloween movie. Yeah, well, I- I'm just glad Michael hasn't gone to space or whatever the fuck you call Freddy's dead yet, so... Yes. Y- yeah, yeah, I guess... Well, their resurrection's just awful, but... <laughs> yeah, it's like, resurrection sucks, but at least it's grounded in reality to an extent. Yeah, I guess. Like, if you call, you know, uh, Buster Rhymes karate kick and Michael Myers, you know, grounded in reality. Well, but... <laughs> I more so mean, like, he's not walking... You don't have Michael Myers walking on the moon or on a spaceship <laughs> yet, so... Or in a video game, whatever, but... um. So I will give the Halloween franchise that, at the very least. Yeah. Emphasis on yet. Yes. (laughs) They have plenty of time to screw it off. Just just wait until, you know, after Halloween ends. Um, It's supposed to be the last Halloween movie. Just wait till it makes a bunch of money, and then they make another one. He's going to space. Or it could be Halloween Resurrection Part 2. Oh, let's let's not not think about that, so... All right. Um... (laughs) Moving along, um, is there anything anything else you want to add before we get into our main flicks of the evening? No, I say we ready. All right, I guess we can go in chronological order here then, would you say? Yeah. yeah. All right, so tonight we are going to start off with The Descent, and... Um, that movie came out in 2005, and uh, would you like to read the synopsis, or shall I? Well, I am loading up in the book as we speak. All right, well, so. I mean, our movies, you know, if you haven't guessed by tonight, we have The Descent and The Ritual from just coming out in 2017, so... Um, 2018. 20, oh, yeah, Getting I guess so. Yeah, I guess. On IMDb, it has 2017. That tripped me up, so... Yeah, you are correct. That's w- that's weird, actually. That movie feels like it's already two years old because it was the beginning of uh-huh. that year that it got its streaming. But yeah, okay. So the Ritual 2018 versus the Descent 2005, I think, unless it's 2006. Who freaking knows? Yeah, I think um, it's I think it's 05. I'm pretty sure. All right, so and we will be starting with the Descent here. Yeah. So um. Yeah, uh, obviously, like, these two films, like, or, like, you know, these, uh, kind of films, horror films, where, like, a group of friends, like, go out on, you know, some sort of, um, expedition, I guess, like, obviously, in this movie, the scent, they go caving, and the next one, they go into the woods, um, so it kind of has that in common, but there's also, like, um, a few other similarities, um, between uh, these movies um, that I had actually even thought of because um, this is only, like, my second time watching The Descent. Mm. Um, you know, it's been a few years, actually. So, uh, yeah, so we'll uh, get into those a little bit later. But, yeah, these were actually uh, Carly's picks. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Imdb synopsis says, A carving expedition goes horribly wrong as the explorers become trapped by uh, ultimately pursued and ultimately pursued by a strange breed of predators. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, they do leave out that um, at the beginning of the movie we see uh, them uh, 
uh, get in a crash and then uh, one of their friends dies. So they're kind of, um, you know, going on this trip a year later, kind of to, um, not, I don't know, not so in memory of her, just kind of get together to, you know, do something to, you know, clear their minds, I guess, especially our main character. Um, which that's again is has is uh, really similar to the plot of the next movie we'll talk about. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, it's been a while since um, I'd seen this movie. Um, you know, I always remembered. You know, this is one of the you know more uh, highly regarded uh, films from the two uh, the two thousands. I would say. Uh, I remember. Um, I'm not sure if this channel's still alive, but they used to uh, have this channel uh, called Chiller. And yeah, it's um, dead, unfortunately. Yeah, I thought I remember it going it yeah going out of business mm-hmm. years ago. Um, but yeah, they had like their top thirteen of the two thousands, and yeah, I remember this movie being on there. Uh, so yeah, it's one of the like I said more popular high regard movies of the two thousands, and um, yeah, I would say uh, overall, um, I did uh, really enjoy this movie. Um, I remember, like, the first time I'd watched this, and it kind of, you know, still have the same type of issue, and I've actually heard other people echo this. Um, all the characters kind of blend in with each other, almost. Like, mm. they're hard to tell apart, kind of. I think that kind of has to do with the fact that they're in a cave, and they don't really, you know, do that great of a job of, like, introducing each character, so they, none of them feel, like, different from each other, so they all kind of just blend in with each other. Um... But like, yeah, like um, like I said, it probably has to do with it, uh, to do with uh, the fact that it's in a cave and it's dark and shit like that, and you can't really see um, too well at some points. But yeah, that was always one of my issues. But I don't, I didn't have much of an issue as it um, as I did beforehand, as I remember. But uh, yeah, I had a um, pretty pretty good time with this movie. Yeah, um, yeah. So this one, I actually. Oddly enough, I think I've only seen it once before, too, during the show. So this is also my second watch. And it was one that, you know, I, too, always remember hearing about and people kind of raved about back in the day and acted like it was one of the better movies to come out in a while. And I just, it took me a while to actually see this. I only saw it for the first time a few years back. And um, I, you know, I remember the first time I saw it, I had the same issue where you can't really – tell the girls apart and another reason for that is not only the darkness but i believe three out of the six girls have blonde longish hair Mm -hmm. so um this time around that wasn't necessarily an issue for me so much because um you got your main girl obviously from the beginning who has a bad experience and you have like the girl with the dark black short hair and then you have the other girl who has dark hair but she also looks like she might be um of some sort of other descent like she uh descent um she has like she has like darker skin tone so um and her hair is longer obviously then the other then you got the short haired girl that they bring along with them and then you have the other two blonde girls um and i think there's other there's two more if i'm not mistaken um and um I, I, they also kind of I notice they do mention them by name a few times and that also helps me uh, t- remember which one's which. But first time I saw it, that was my biggest issue. And my second issue go kind of goes hand in hand with the darkness where when all the horrifying stuff starts going down with the predators kind of in the cave with them, it's like not you can't really tell what's going on half the time. It's like someone gets attacked, but it's too dark to really see what's happening. Um, I do think the creatures look a little bit dated. Like they're kind of like CG ish looking, but at the same time they are creepy. And the first time that you see kind of the jump scare one come out, it's not really a jump, but it's one of those things where you're not expecting to see it. And it comes out of nowhere. Um, I think, I think that's still pretty effective, but overall that entire part where they're, in the cave and it's really dark um i kind of do still have an issue with because you can't that's supposed to be when everything's really going down and you can't see a whole lot of action or anything but uh with you know with getting the negatives out of the way um i really enjoyed this i think i liked it a lot more this time around than i did the first time and i did enjoy it quite a bit the first time but um this time i got more invested in the characters and uh i think for, let me just put, I think the idea of caving and going down underground is one of the dumbest hobbies I, I in the absolute world. <laughs> like, there's so much beautiful world to explore, and you're going to 
you're going to go down into the middle of the earth and hope you don't die pretty much because you're you, you got to hope that the caves don't go in on you and uh the claustrophobia would just not make it worth it at all for me so i think this movie does a fantastic job with the intensity um especially uh, it builds tension when they get to this point where they have to kind of b- put a rope across this giant like hole in the ground or what it's like a, they come to a cliff pretty much underneath and they have to get to the other end so this one girl's just kind of like monkey barring it to the other side and like my anxiety is through the roof during that part and uh, I think it just does a fantastic job with that so um yeah and it, it's also creepy towards the end with uh your main girl when she kind of finds something out and just um you, you know she's like covered in blood and I always just found it really unsettling and creepy because you could tell she finds out something that um you know she wasn't supposed to know about and it involves one of the other girls and you kind of become more creeped out by her herself than you do the actual predators underneath and um I think uh, that still holds up as well so overall I really enjoyed this movie this time around uh probably way more so than I did the first time yeah uh, I would say like um the build up to this movie is what I like me the most just kind of like when they're like getting like everything like before the like the big like horse stuff actually happens I actually actually like my favorite part of the movie um I'm not really like a claustrophobic person but uh yeah uh, I do agree uh going caving is like the dumbest idea I can think of. <laughs> um and that scene where um you know, going they're you know going through that really tight space and that chick gets stuck like that just really yeah it just drives up my anxiety and uh yeah it definitely uh makes me feel claustrophobic one of my favorite scenes in the movie and like you said that part that scene where they're going across the you know the um big you know cliff like thing is also really good, and um, they do a really good job of hiding the creatures, too. Like, you'll see, like, a little glimpse of them, and then they'll just run away and stuff like that, so that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I just really like, like, the whole build-up to it, and I will agree with you. Actually, one, like, my main problem with the movie is, like, you know, when the stuff actually does stop happening, it's not uh, it's not bad, but uh, uh, I would say it's, you know, I more have a problem with, like, the cam work and the direction, when it's mm-hmm. going on, it's kind of like disorienting. So I think that's really why I can't tell what's going on more so than the lighting. It, it um, almost feels like you're watching a found footage movie it, or something kinda, at that it point. It kind of does, yeah. And it's it's just not done um, as well as it could have been in the third act, I don't think. Um, but still, there's still some good parts um, in the third act, though. But uh, yeah, just like when they're going through the cave and that one chick you know, falls through the hole by being an idiot and running ahead... And uh-huh. it breaks her leg. Um, that part's always, you know, anytime I see a bone sticking out, you know, that's just, uh, it's just studs. It's just, just delightful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. P- very pleasant. Um, and I've never broken a bone, knock on wood, but, um, uh, to me, when I see stuff like that, I just picture it being the worst possible agony you could ever experience. Yes. But, you know, I, I've never had it happen to me firsthand, but just anytime I see that, it really makes me kind of cringe. Yes, I've never broken anything. I've fractured, but never broken anything. So, um, but yeah, that's that's like my favorite part of the movie, and I do like how like um, we kind of see inside our main character's mind the entire movie that she's you know having these kind of flashbacks and stuff like that to uh, her friend that died and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that that's uh, kind of adds a little bit more um, to her character and. Uh, uh, just like the arc that she goes on, you know, she kind of starts out, you know, being, you know, she's kind of depressed and down, and, you know, towards the end of the movie, she just becomes a complete badass, really. So mm-hmm. she just, uh, I, I just really like the uh, journey her character goes on in this movie. So I actually never checked out the sequel to this, which I definitely think I, 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 don't, I don't know if you know, too many people you know, what the reviews are on it, really, but I think I'd want to check it out just to see what the hell happens in it, happens to her. Yeah, you know, I was actually going to ask if you have, because um, I I posted this somewhere, and um, people were saying, like, how the sequel is actually not too bad. Some even said they kind of like it a little bit more than 
this one, and I know it does have continuity. You do have that main girl, and because I kind of like, you know, I always have to spoil stuff for me. I like write up on it a little bit. You do have like the main girl as well as another character returning in the sequel, so it does make me want to kind of pick that one up eventually and watch it because, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I enjoyed this one, and I would like to see. It, since people say that one's actually not that bad, which I would feel like with a movie like this, I would feel like it wouldn't really need a sequel. But if people are saying like, oh, the second one's pretty decent, um, I do kind of want to watch that eventually. Yeah, um, I do really like the ending to this movie, um, too. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, well, it's pretty much the exact same uh, deal as uh, the first 47 years down, which I know you haven't seen yet. Mm -mm. Um, but... Yeah, it's kind of the same deal that happens there. And I actually don't like the way it's done in 47 Meters Down, but I kind of like it in this in this uh, movie for some reason. Um, but yeah, it just kind of um, you know leaves you with a you know kind of a feeling of almost almost like hopelessness at the end of this movie. So um, yeah, it's uh, I always kind of like downer endings like that. I'm wondering. I feel like you and I watched a different ending. Really? Because there's two endings to this film, and uh, yeah, you know I, I, I have the uh, I have the uh, unrated cut of it. So. Okay, because I mean I watched this on um, YouTube as I explained for some reason the Blu-ray. All I have is an Xbox and a PS3. I no longer own a Blu-ray player because I figure like, eh, why waste the money when I have those two things I can use? So um, I wanted to play this on both of them, and it did not work on either of them because I do own the Blu-ray, and um, unfortunately I had to end up renting it on YouTube. And um, I'm thinking the ending you watched was the downbeat ending, and the one I watched is more of the upbeat ending, but it's got like one like final scare at the end. You know, I don't want to give away both of the endings yeah. on the podcast, but I think the way you describe it, I think you watch that one. And it makes me wonder, because I do have, like I said, I have that Blu-ray. I'm not sure which cut it is. I forget. So, um, because I forget what the ending was when I first watched this a few years ago. So I'm wondering if that's uh, a different ending than when I watched on YouTube. But it's interesting, because um, mm -hmm. apparently they made an ending for the U.S. because... They, they deemed the original to be too dark for us Americans. So, um... Yeah, that's what mine is, the original one rated cut, so... That's... Yeah, that's that's actually interesting, because I thought we would end up watching the same one, but <laughs> hearing you describe it, I'm pretty sure it was the different one. But either way, I think both endings... Uh, the ending I watched, I like. Um, it's Like I said, it's a little more upbeat, and it shows kind of um, a good deal of emotion from your main character, too, that is really well done, so um, I enjoy that one. I mean, I do like my downbeat endings as well, but sometimes I like my happy endings, because I don't want to be depressed. <laughs> yeah, not being depressed is, is good sometimes. Yeah, that's the way I, I try to live life. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, any final thoughts on this one? Um, not really. I mean, overall, I, I think it is solid. If you have not watched this one, if it has slipped under your radar, as it did for me for many a years, um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, it's especially if you like if you're into the movies where it's kind of a group of people like a group of friends going on some adventure that goes horribly wrong. There's definitely several movies out there that are kind of like this. And um, I think and if you like, you know, having your anxiety completely raised by uh, watching heights and claustrophobia, I think this is the one for you. So, um, yeah, I enjoy it. All right. So I guess we are ready to move on to the ritual from 2018, which is a Netflix movie. Yes. I was gonna say Netflix original, I guess. Um, mm. So. Yeah, I know, um, I think last episode we announced we were going to do something on Shudder. Well, like we said, that fell through because the movie we were going to do got released, got um, taken off of Shudder, because of course it did. Um, so, but yeah, this movie is on Netflix, if you guys have not seen it, and it is from last year. So, um, yeah, the Imdaba synopsis says, A group of college friends reunite for a trip to the forest. Uh, but encounter a menacing presence in the woods that's stalking them. Yeah, so again, that's basically the uh, basic premise of it, and again, like The Descent, um, the first scene we get in this movie is um, 
our main character in a convenience store, and uh, his friend ends up getting killed um, there. And uh, yeah, it's after that, it's just the group, you know, the group of other friends that were in that group uh, go out and hike into the woods, which um, is a better, you know, alternative to going caving, I think. Oh yes, um, like I would actually, I would actually do this. Activity. Yeah, I, I would just be afraid of getting lost. That would be my only thing, because being lost in the woods, um, you know, it doesn't sound very pleasant, but mm-hmm. at least it's not being, like, stuck in a cave. You know, yeah. I think, I think I'd rather do this. Well, I do like hiking in the woods, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, this movie is kind of like a psychological slash, like, supernatural type of a film, uh, you know, a little bit different from uh, Descent. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, this movie came out at the beginning of 2018, like we said, and it's made my top 15 of last year. I know it made uh, a few other people's lists as well that I saw. Uh, so yeah, this one, you know, got mainly positive reviews, um, so it was one of the more, uh, highly regarded, uh, films that come out, um, last year, horror-wise. Um... So, yeah, re- this is actually my third time watching this, I believe, because I believe I rewatched it last year, mm. uh, before the end of the year, but, uh, yeah, um, I will say, like, the first time I watched it, um, it was probably the best I ever liked it, I don't, like, I, it hasn't really gone down that much for me, I just, I just would say I slightly like it less than I did before, um, but, yeah, this movie, I, I just love movies set in the woods, um, you know, it has some, like, great cinematography, uh, just some, like, beautiful shots of the landscape and stuff like that, and I really do like the characters in this movie, again, kind of like The Descent, some of them kind of, you know, mix in with each other for me, mm. um, but again, like The Descent, um, our main character is seeing, like, these visions and stuff like that of, you know, of when his friend was killed, and he feels, you know, responsible for it, because he didn't, you know, do anything to try to stop it and stuff like that. So he's feeling grief over that, so he's dealing with that, you know, as well as this whole supernatural thing that they're dealing with. So, uh, again, just has a whole new element to it. But, uh, yeah, I would say I still uh, really enjoy this movie. It's still really solid. Um, So, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, this one, um, this for me is actually also a second-time watch. Um, We actually covered this on Netflix and Chill, last year um and uh, jp and i actually watched this one together and i remember we kept by the ending i think he got a phone call or something so we kept like pausing it and uh i had been wanting to revisit it ever since because i was really kind of digging it but then we got distracted and uh, i felt like i didn't really grasp the entire ending fully and obviously i didn't really get back to it that year but i thought it would be a good one for this show because while watching it i the two big movies I can compare it to are The Blair Witch Project and The Descent. And it's really, you know, when you think of The Descent in this film, the general plot and idea is completely different, uh, different landscapes, uh, you different groups of people and uh, different circumstances, and especially a different, different wrap-up, like the horror ele- elements to it uh, that you come to by the end of both of these films are clearly um, not the same at all, but... Just the overall idea of um, there is a tragedy and then it's like sometime later two groups of people are going on a trip. And it's also interesting because it's like a group of girls in the descent and then a group of guys in this movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go on these trips and then everything goes horribly wrong. Um, That was kind of while watching this, I thought like, wow, this would be a good double feature with descent. And um, so I'm glad we have this show now, like a year later Mm -hmm. to talk about them and the ritual, you know, I like it. I, I do enjoy it. I enjoy the characters and the way they interact with each other. Um, oh, that's another, I just thought of another comparison. One of the characters actually ends up injuring their leg horribly. Not as yeah. bad in the descent, <laughs> but um, uh, that's I didn't even think about that. But it's kind of interesting. Um, I feel that I can tell these guys apart a little bit better because for whatever reason, I find that guys are easier to tell apart than females. I don't know. Uh, I think that uh, girls, if they just have the same hair, like they all kind of look the same if they're just pretty basic looking girls and then guys always have kind of different features. So I don't really have that problem in this film as much as the other one, but 
I enjoy all the parts of them hiking in the woods, and I think it's there's a lot of creepy, uh, you know, unsettling moments in this movie, especially when they get to find that little house in the woods and they sleep there overnight, and like one dude's obviously having one of his visions and dreams, and then they wake up and you know they're seeing all these just creepy figures in the woods uh, that are linked to kind of witchcraft type stuff. Um, I think that's all really well and good. Um, the problems I have with this movie, I would say is I don't really care for the guys like flashbacks to the shopping or the uh, store liquor store, whatever he was in. Um, I think it just kind of plays out a little bit weird to have this dream sequence in the woods. I think it's well done, but I just don't really enjoy watching it visually. I could do without it kind of, and I'm not a huge fan of dream sequences to begin with. So, um, you know, there's that. Um, and the way the movie wraps up while it's creepy and everything, um, I don't know. I just don't really necessarily, I never really care for that sort of, um, plot ending type of deal. You know, I don't want to like give away the entire ending to the movie or anything like that, but the, what it turns out to be, like, when everything is said and done, I think it gets a little bit too... I think it is based on, like, mythology, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, because yes. I remember people were, like, talk. yeah, I remember, like, people talking big on that when the movie came out to kind of, like, you know, justify... Not justify, but, like, explain what the ending all means, and I'm just not overly into that. I think it gets a little too fantasy-like, but in general, overall, I like the uh, concept of them being in the woods that setting always creeps me out. I like all the stuff they're finding that kind of reminds me of Blair Witch, like how they find all those figures in the trees and stuff like that. And um, I enjoy the group of characters as well. So overall, I think this is a solid movie. I'm probably not as high on it as other people, especially when this first came out. I knew a lot of people really enjoyed it. And you, like you said, it's like in your top 15 of the year. So um, I don't know if I would be that high on it, but I do enjoy this one. Yeah, um, kind of, like, opposite to The Descent, ironically. Like, the first, like, kind of the build-up to this movie, in this movie, like, I don't care for as much as the rest of it when stuff actually starts picking up. Mm. Um, for a good chunk of it, they're just kind of walking through the woods and just BSing, and nothing's really happening. And um, that scene where they, you know, sleep in that cabin... Um, I've never really gotten, like, why this stuff happens. Like, one dude wakes up butt-ass naked, and, like, I just... I know something has to do with, like, supernatural, something supernatural is going on, but I just... Mm -hmm. Like, after three times of watching it, I don't understand, like, exactly what the hell is going on with all of them. Um, But, uh, yeah, uh, I do really, really like... um, like, uh, when stuff, like, actually starts happening, or at least you start seeing the monster, because uh, there's a few scenes where you can look in the background and actually see the monster and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, really cool, um, like, it's, like, just stalking them through the woods and stuff like that, so, um, that's cool, and, um, I, I do like almost all of the ending up until the very ending, like, um, I like when, um, the dude's, like, getting, like, tortured and stuff like that upstairs, and dude's just tied down downstairs, like, that, that to me is, like, always, like, be one of the worst feelings ever. Yeah. To just be, like, downstairs and see, hear something being tortured upstairs, like, oh, Can't shit. wait for, my, yeah, can't wait for my turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like that aspect of it, I think it's creepy. And, um, but yeah, the very ending I've never really liked. It's just kind of abrupt, and yeah, I just don't, um, it could, definitely could have been executed better, I feel. But, uh, yeah, um, overall, um, like I said, this is really solid. I don't know if it'd be my top 15 now. It'd be really close still. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's, it kind of, you know, I feel the same way about this as I do a few other movies, but I feel like I'd feel, maybe watch a few other movies rather watch them more than this one, um, but, yeah, I still think it's a really solid movie, definitely check this out on Netflix if you haven't, um, but, uh, yeah, do you have any final thoughts on this? Um, I don't think so, I did, I will say I did enjoy it the second time around more than I did the first time, so that was good, and, um, you know, your, your, like, comments on how, 
it's like, what the heck is going on with them sometimes? I think it all just is, like, supposed to be some weird, witchy, crafty mm-hmm. shiz going on that it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really need an explanation, but I could see why you're just like, okay, so what's the point of this dude being naked? Like, what what does this lead to type of deal? But, um, yeah, but, you know, I like it. Um, it's not a bad movie. I definitely recommend checking it out if you have not as well on Netflix. All right, so... We are ready to rate these bad boys, so, um, I guess, um, I forget how the hell we do this. I think we, <laughs> I think, yeah, we get one movie at a time. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we switched it. Okay. It's been a while. We're a little rusty. A little, yeah, yeah, doing, yeah. Do some slack. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll start with The Descent, of course. I'll rate it first. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed this movie, um, you know, I, it has some really good visuals in it as well. It's something I didn't bring up. There's, like, some cool lighting towards the end, though. It's, like, some, like, green and red lighting that's going mm. on. Really, really love some of those visuals. Um, and just a really kind of tense movie throughout. Um, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, like I said before, um, I enjoy it, too. The only major issue I have is with the dark aspects but to me that's not even a huge deal to me that's kind of not even what the movie's about it feels more about the main girl and her like struggles with the horrible uh loss she experiences at the beginning so um you know the predators are just like a plus for horror for the horror aspects but yeah um i really enjoy it i would rewatch it again in the future and i do want to see the sequel so i gave the descent an 8.5 as well Alright, so that gives it a 17 out of 20 combined, Eight. as my calculator just told me. Um, <laughs> I thought you like came up with that math in your head real quick. Oh, I was like, whoa, I, I, impressive. I, I could have, but I'm, I'm too lazy to do that now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, moving on to the ritual, um, like I said, I still really like this movie. Um, it's definitely one of the better horror movies that come out last year. I feel like um, I'm coming just a tad lower than on the descent, I'm calling it an 8.25 out of 10. Oh uh, damn! I forgot you rate like that. <laughs> I think I feel like I remind you of that like every episode. I know. Like, oh. I feel like I feel like you don't. I feel like you don't rate the movie. I, you probably freaking do though. Um. Anyway, I felt like you know. I mean, I feel like you don't really give movies that rating that often, and I, then I completely forget. But anyway, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter either way. Um. Yeah. The the ritual. Um. I think. This rating I give it might it's either the same rating that I gave it back when I did it for Netflix and Chill. If not, um, it's a point above, but uh, it is a little bit below the Descent as well, and a little bit below your rating. Um, even though I did enjoy it, I only give it a 7.5 out of 10. All right, so that's only a 15.75. So uh, the Descent will get the win here. Um, now, over on our group page, we, of course, asked the audience, and surprisingly, we have a tie. Um, so I guess we just settled it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Everybody, screw listen, you guys. <laughs> listen to us. We, we're we the judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to what movie is better than the other. Yeah. That's pretty cool, though. I appreciate all you guys uh, voting on that poll it's very it makes it fun the more people who do yeah. vote and i was actually pretty shocked that it came to a direct tie like that um i didn't really know which one would win though honestly either because i feel like people were super high on the ritual and that's a movie that obviously just came out so i knew more about the consensus with that one but i also know the descent is kind of well regarded as being one of those um uh 2000s gems so mm-hmm. um you know i didn't know how it would turn out and it turns out that um you guys didn't either, and it was equal. <laughs> <laughs> you guys so. had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Um, no, but I, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate all the, you know, interaction stuff like that too. Uh, definitely makes it more fun for us, you know, uh, and uh, more interesting. So, uh, yeah, um, that is going to wrap up this episode. Uh, next episode, we are going to be doing uh, two movies that, again. Uh, don't really share the same theme, but are very, very alike, and that is The Neon Demon and Starry Eyes. So, um, yeah, that is my pick, and um, I'm kind of, I'm excited to rewatch one of them, 
Um, not so much the other. Um, kind of wondering why I picked the movie, but uh, <laughs> I, I it's just the movies just go together, so that's why I picked them. So, which one um, is he talking about? Stay tuned. Yes, yeah, stay tuned for next episode. Hell, maybe maybe I'll like it more next episode. You'll never know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's happened before. I've done complete three sixties on movies before, so hell, who knows? Um, but yeah, um, everybody, thanks for listening. Um, make sure to uh, you know leave feedback on our group page uh, for the episode, and we will catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.